In a series of videos to this point, we've written some test-driven design unit tests from requirements document, and we have written classes that make those tests pass. And the tests now do pass, so we know that we've met the requirements. But we've kind of ignored the user interface, which is driver. So in this video, we're going to see how we can update the driver user interface to allow the user to select a type of vehicle instead of just the superclass vehicle. We can give the user a pre-selected list of vehicles to choose from using a J option pane and a special kind of array. Now, we're not really using this nickname up here, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to repurpose this. We see it's a bit more complicated than the previous J option pane show input dialog. Several more arguments we have to give this. Number one, what frame is this attached to? And since we're running in command line, there is no frame. Number two, we need a prompt for the user. Number three, a title. Number four, an icon. Or, a, sorry, a message type and then an icon. And then we need a collection of vehicles that we're going to give the user as a predefined list. And I'm calling that available cars. Spelled correctly. And then we need to give it a default, uh, which I'm choosing as Sonic here, kind of like the basic car. The return type changes as well. It's no longer a string. It will be an object. Let's just do that the easy way because we want to rename it anyway. So I put my mouse over the method signature, alt enter, and let's say introduce local variable. One more thing I want to change. You notice that we have uh, an array up here, which is the predefined list that we're showing to the user. So a couple notes on this if you're not familiar with arrays. First of all, the square bracket indicates there are going to be multiple of this type of value. And of course, to the left of the square bracket, bracket is the type. Now we have the variable name. Now, we can declare an array and then initialize it one element at a time, or we can use this curly syntax, which just initializes it all at once. And you see that we have curly Sonic, Mustang, Prius. So we're going to have three selections here for the user. Now, over here on the right, we also have Sonic, typed out in quotes. And it's possible we could mistype that at some point, or maybe the Sonic is discontinued and we need to change it to something else, we only want to change it in one place, because if we have it in multiple places, uh, that's multiple places where we can change it, and more than likely, where we will forget to change it. So a good idea is to make constants out of each of these. I, I right-click, refactor, and in introduce constant. And really, it, it can simply be the same name as the variable itself. And you see that IntelliJ kind of uh, gives me that option. It's like, well, you have Sonic in quotes. Why don't we just go ahead and call it Sonic? So yeah, that's good. And with that, now we can change the slash argument to the constant as well. And I'll pause the video for just a moment as I make constants out of the others. And there we have it. We have three constants that are very descriptive, Sonic, Mustang, and Prius. And you see they're set up here to Sonic, Mustang, and Prius. So the actual word in quotes, we only have here one time, but we can reference by using that constant as many times as we wish. So we get this car type back, and right after that we're constructing an object, and this is where we need to figure out which to create, uh, a Prius, a Mustang, or a Sonic. And for that, we could do it with an if test here, but really the method is called prompt user, and it's probably better if we split that out into a separate method. Let's call it create vehicle. I'm going to make the return type void, which is not correct, but we need to just have a placeholder there until we can decide what the right return type should be. So we have public static void. We know we'll change that. Create vehicle and then final object selected vehicle. So this is going to get passed in from what the user chose on that dropdown. So it will be either Sonic or Mustang or Prius or whatever we have in that array. Now inside of this create vehicle, we're saying, okay, if selected vehicle to string. Now, first of all, why to string? Well, remember we're receiving an object, but we want to do a string comparison. And to do a string comparison, we won't do the double equals, but instead we'll use the equals method. Now, what's interesting here is we're comparing it to what? 
we're comparing it to the constants that we declared up above. Let's go full circle. We have a constant called sonic. So we go up there and we see it's double quote, sonic plus double quote. That is here in our array, the collection. We're passing that collection to this J option pane show input dialog to give the user a predefined list of objects to choose or vehicle types to choose. We're taking that and we're storing that into a variable called available cars, and that will be this exact constant. So when we get back down here, what we're saying is, let's take what the user chose, the selected vehicle, and let's compare that to each of the constants and see which one the user chose. Okay, now we can continue. If it's a Sonic, we're going to say something equals new Sonic. We'll come back and figure out what that something is in just a moment. If it's a Mustang, it's going to be something equals new Mustang, okay? If it's a Prius, we're going to say something equals new Prius. Remember when we have that keyword new and then a constructor, we're constructing an object. And when we construct an object, we have an option to save it into a variable. Now, what are the rules about object and variable? Okay, the object type can be the same as the variable type. So we could have a variable for Prius, for Mustang, and for Sonic. But we could only store a Sonic and a Sonic, a Mustang and a Mustang, and a Prius and a Prius. We couldn't cross around. But now what's the other rule of object and variable type? Well, an object can be a subclass of the variable type. Or an object can be a class that implements an interface if the interface is the variable type. So in other words, when we have that variable and object, the variable and object can be the same, or the object can be a child of the variable. And that matches up to the solid principle of Liskov substitution. Every subclass should be substitutable for its base class. So a Prius is a vehicle. A Mustang is a vehicle. A Sonic is a vehicle. All three of those types can be substitutable for vehicle. So hopefully now we have an idea of what uh, that common bond is that could represent each of these vehicles. So we'll simply say vehicle, vehicle, declare it right here. And then we'll assign it each of these. And finally, we'll return whichever one was created. Now we do have a bit of a gap here, which is what if the user doesn't select any of these options, Sonic, Mustang, or Prius? Well, then it's going to return a null vehicle, which is a little bit tricky. But the good news is the user can't do that. Because by using this J option pane and providing it with this predefined list of vehicles, that's all the user can choose. But what we do have to be careful of is that this list here that we're using in that combo box has to have an equivalent for everything down here in the create vehicle uh, method. Uh, if we add a new vehicle up there, we have to add the vehicle down there. Now, not to worry, in the future, we're going to find a more efficient way to do this that uses no if test whatsoever and is very dynamic and forward looking. If we want to be safe, and this is a fairly good idea, we can go ahead and initialize this to that superclass type, provided that the superclass is not an abstract class, but we haven't talked about abstract classes yet, so if you're not familiar with that concept, don't worry about it. But nonetheless, we're here, and we see it doesn't like that I'm trying to return vehicle because I can't because my return type is void, because we didn't know what it was going to be when I made this method signature. But no problem, we can replace void with vehicle. And now things actually become quite straightforward. We take out this constructor call up above, right after we do that prompt, and we simply say create vehicle. And we pass in the car type variable. And magic, everything will work. Now, it's always a good idea to add a bit of javadoc to our function, so I'm going to pause the video just a moment and add some javadoc to this new function. And you see this is fairly straightforward, javadoc is slash, asterisk, asterisk, series of asterisks, then a close, asterisk, slash, and then inside of that a description, a description of the parameters one by one, and a description of the return type. Now be careful here. When adding javadoc, make sure it adds value. Sometimes I see people add javadoc and all they do is list the parameters without a description. You can read the parameters in the method signature, so listing them again doesn't help. But listing them and having a definition of what they do and what the return type is and any possible exceptions, well, that's adding value. Uh, one other note, javadoc above method, that's generally preferred uh, that we have it, that we have it, period, but that we have it above classes and non-private methods. That's preferred over inline comments. Inline comments tend to indicate code that's not readable. So instead of inline comments, 
make readable code. But Javadoc above a method that kind of gives its purpose. And remember, with solid single responsibility, method should have really one thing it does well. So that purpose should be fairly finite. So with Javadoc there, we have a good idea of what the method's doing without worrying about all of the intricate details. So all that being said, uh, after I finish this video, but before I commit and push, I'm going to add Javadoc above all the other methods as well. But for now, I think we're code complete. Let's go ahead and try things out. We'll start by running it, and then we'll debug. So driver, run, and Sonic. Uh, these are obviously going to be made up values, but Sonic will say 20 miles per gallon, uh, 20 gallons of gas, 20,000 on the odometer. Mustang, 10 miles to the gallon. We'll say maybe 30 gallons of gas, probably a little high there. Uh, 10,000 on the odometer. And then Prius... We'll say 50 miles per gallon, 5 gallons of gas, 50,000 on the odometer, and then we're all done making cars. First trip's going to be 100 miles, and we see that the odometer increases for each of our vehicles, and we see that the gallons of gas decreases. Now let's take another trip, and let's go 120 miles, and let's watch the odometer and the gallons of gas for each of our vehicles. And we see, okay, that the the odometer goes up and the gallons of gas decreases for the Sonic. And similar for the uh, Mustang, we see the odometer changes, the gallons of gas changes. Now the Prius, you notice that the odometer goes up, but the gallons of gas does not. And why is that? Well, remember that the Prius is overriding that go method. And in certain conditions, it's not going to use gasoline at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at this through the debugger. In the driver class, I have a breakpoint already on the prompt user method. And in Prius, I have a breakpoint on the go method. So let's right click on driver and choose debug. I'm just going to create a Prius in this round just to keep it simple because we have a lot of debugging to do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and choose F8 and we'll choose Prius. 50 miles on the gallon and now we can continue through our program. Not a whole lot to see in the prompt method because we've seen this all before, but it will be interesting to see what happens in the display output method. So I'm back up to main. I choose F7 to step into that. We'll say we want to go 100. Now we're iterating over our collection of vehicles of, of which we only have one. Now take a look here at our current line. We're on this go method call. Miles driven 100, vehicle is Prius. So we know that we are in a Prius vehicle. Given the magic of polymorphism, even though the vehicle is a variable of type vehicle, we know the object under the covers is an object of type Prius. So when we choose F7, we'll see that we're stepping into Prius. And now F8, okay, we can, we can uh, go back to that inherited behavior. And then we can increase our charge. And then we're essentially finished at this point. So we continue until our next trip. We're going to go ahead and say take another trip because we want to watch what happens in internal, uh, sorry, in, in electric mode. So 100, F8, 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 F7 on the go. Now watch carefully here because what's our charge? Well, our charge is 5. Is 5 less than 5? No, it's not. Uh, but we come down here and we say, is charge greater than or equal to 5? Well, yes, it is. And uh, then we're going to run with the battery. Now, one note, if you've been following this, these, this video sequence since the beginning, I realized I had a mistake there. Uh, I had one if test was less than five, the other was greater than five. I didn't cover the case of exactly five. That's a common mistake to make, and I should know better. Uh, but nonetheless, I updated, I added the equal, I paused this video and added that. But wanted to let you know if you wonder if you're following along and you think, why is mine not working? Uh, just make sure that you have that exactly five case covered as well. So with that, we'll choose F8, and we will see that the charge decreases by a certain factor, and the odometer increases. And once again, verify we are in the class called Prius in an overridden method called Go. And so with that, we will go ahead and finish this up. So that's a look at how to uh, create a drop-down or combo box with some pre-selected fields. It's also an initial look at making a factory method, but we're going to find a much more efficient way to make that factory method later. So, as always, I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.